Now, how do you exercise uh, cognitivism in the classroom? There are several key things that you can bring about ex uh, understanding this. Uh, the first few things are gaining the student's attention, using clues to signal when the, you are ready to begin, because partly you want the mind to 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 ready ready to engage. Move around the room to use voice, inflection, and changing tones. Because remember, we have talked about how the the different senses pick up things differently, and how so the different tone and different positions helps in memory. Bring to mind relevant prior learning because you want to before you you impart new knowledge you have to bring out the old knowledge, analyze it, find the gaps, and then fill it in uh, into fill it in with new knowledge. Uh, review previous day's lesson, having a discussion about previously covered content, point out important information, provide handouts, write on the board or use transparency projector in any form. And currently, uh, the new classrooms use a lot of uh, what do I say? Smart bots and, and mobile learning. The whole idea is to recognize that the mind has several forms of input. And one strategically, of course, every mind has his, his, his preferred point of interview. But the point is you have five different inputs. And you maximize and, and take advantage of all the different five inputs by using necessary tools and technology. Okay, then you go on to present information in an organized manner. And this is really important because there was a study done many, many years ago when I first started doing uh, postgraduate studies. I remember my professor once and came and said he, he presented this case. In Germany, I think they were uh, talking to five-year-olds. In one class, they went to the class and told the students to write the first thing that comes to your mind. So they were going to present two words. And they said, once we flash two words, Write the first thing that comes to your mind. They flush the word knife, followed by the word puppy. Now, because the word, and, and students straight away responded to use the knife as a weapon to hurt the puppy. In a second class, they went and they presented, the order, presented in, the, in the reciprocal order. They presented the word puppy, followed by the word knife. And somehow, it, it responded positive uh, thoughts like using the knife to cut the sausage to feed the puppy and things like that. See from a cognitive point of view the order of information has significant impact in the way information is processed and stored in memory. So this is, is a great example I thought uh, how uh, showing sequential and concept presenting information in an organizing manner. Okay. Then the next one is show a logical sequence to concept and skills. Uh, go from simple to complex when presenting new materials. Show students how to uh, categorize and relate information. Once again, uh, this concept is important because it helps students to to uh, store information. Remember, this whole idea of cognition is about storage bank and how memory moves from short term to long term and how memory is retrieved. So they give a lot of importance to how memory is stored. No, first let's, let me rewind back again. It gives a lot of importance to how memory is presented, so that how memory is presented will affect how memory is uh, received, how memory is received will affect how memory is stored, and how memory is stored will reflect on how memory is recalled. So, so the whole idea is, is interrelated. Present information categories, teach uh, inductive reasoning, provide opportunities for students to elaborate new information, Connect new information is something they already know. Look for similarity and differences in concepts. Okay, the last few more. Students uh, show students how to use coding when memorizing list. Uh, make use of simple sentences with the first letter. You know, these are all the strategies that we have learned through a lot of this brain-based uh, learning activities and things like that. Use mental imagery techniques. Provide repetition for learning. State important principles several times in different ways. Present information from a short uh, STM, short-term uh, memory perspective. Have items on each day's lesson from previous lesson to recall from the long-term memory and uh, schedule periodic reviews. Okay. Now, so this is the second part. Now, however, there's a major part that I, I will present it from a, from a different perspective. It's called constructivism. Now, constructivism is actually... Uh, just elaborating on Vygotsky's work and Vygotsky and Piaget's work, where they are taking 
the social constructive uh, social constructive approach uh, to the step one step further.